Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to talk Bulldog cross country. And with us, senior David Silversmith. And David, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Bulldogs uh, moving on to the national championships this weekend on the men's side and uh, certainly a great accomplishment. Second consecutive year. Uh, how, how forward are, are you looking to this weekend's national championships? Well, our team is, uh, they are excited. It's the first time we've gone back to back in a very, very long time. It's been almost 20 years since last year from the last time we went. And we were really looking forward to the moment to running at regionals and showing everyone that we were able to compete with the top teams. And we definitely showed up to the occasion, and now we're going on. The Bulldogs uh, qualifying for nationals a couple weeks ago in the regional, uh, actually last weekend in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, a tough region, uh, some tough teams, but you finish among the top four and you get the opportunity to move on. Uh, just, just talk about that regional. Uh, what, what went well for the Bulldogs? Well, the, the Midwest Regional is one of the, the toughest regionals in the country for Division II. Um, you could argue it as the hardest regional to get out of. There are eight ranked teams, nationally ranked teams in there, and only four were able to go. Um, we somehow was, we were able to run with uh, where we needed to be at, and we were able to qualify. Uh, a lot of the teams that were ranked ahead of us, we knew we could beat based off earlier races, and it turns out when the distance changed from an 8K to a 10K, we proved who was better at the distance. The Bulldogs uh, finish uh, among the top four. You personally uh, finish among the top 15 to earn all region honors. Con congratulations Thank there. You. And, uh, just talk about your race uh, and, and how that went. Uh, the, the chorus was pretty in pretty rough shape. Um, there was a couple downhills that were muddy. Uh, it was definitely a tough course for everyone to run at. I, my race personally was uh, an interesting story actually. I, I came out in the first mile right around 55th place or 60th place, right around a 520 first mile split. And at that moment when I saw the time at the first mile marker, I was like, all right, I have to start moving ahead or we're not gonna have a chance to qualify. And from there on, over the next five miles, I was able to move up all the way into the top 20 and then into the top 15 where I finished. The Bulldogs this weekend uh, will take part in the national championships in Spokane, Washington. Uh, a long trip. Uh, uh, just talk about uh, the itinerary for the Bulldogs, uh, when you get to Spokane and, and how you get ready to race. Well, we're taking off. Uh, we're going to stay in Grand Rapids on Wednesday night, and then we have a very early flight uh, from Grand Rapids to Minneapolis and then out to Spokane. Uh, we're going to run at the chorus on Thursday, and then we're going to find some place to run on Friday as well. When it comes to race day, uh, I believe our race goes off uh, Pacific time right around noon to 1230. So it'll be about 330 here, Eastern. Uh, we have the same game plan as we did going into regionals to basically sit back and wait for the race to come to us and then go for it. We've, a, lot, a lot of time when we've been racing, we've struggled to actually get ourselves into the race and into the position early enough to where we need to be. But in regionals, we were able to do that. And now that we know what we need to do for sure, I think we'll perform well when we get out there. How do you, uh, what do you expect in terms of the weather conditions? Uh, obviously in the, in the Northwest, a little bit different uh, terrain. Uh, how, how does that have an impact on, on the race? The course itself is actually flat, but being in Eastern Washington, uh, the elevation's a little bit higher. Um, as for the weather, I'm not really sure how it's supposed to look right now. I haven't really thought, it, thought about it. Um, I think we'll be fine regardless of the weather, given the past couple days that we've had here in Big Rapids. Uh, everything from rain to snow to wind to thunderstorms to tornadoes even. I mean, if we can deal with this here, then we can deal with anything out there. The Bulldogs uh, certainly uh, had to battle some weather conditions uh, times this year. Uh, a couple weeks ago at the GLIAC Championships in Houghton, Michigan, uh, an another cold and, and kind of rainy day. Yeah, the, the GLIAC Championships, uh, that was a race that I was looking forward to kind of. Uh, it was a very tough course. There were a lot of elevation changes. Um, we knew we weren't going out there to basically show our stuff, show what we are made of yet. We didn't want to go out there and give it all we had and not be prepared for the regional meet. We were content with where we finished. Uh, that, that put us under the radar for the regional meet coming in that everyone kind of, kind of counted us out. We dropped to eighth in the regional rankings. And uh, we knew that as the distance got longer and as the chorus got tougher, then we would be able to show that we are stronger than everyone else out in the field. And in addition to the men's team qualifying uh, for the second straight year, uh, Samantha Johnson on the women's side uh, wins the women's regional mm -hmm. championship. She'll compete at nationals as well. And uh, certainly uh, she, she had a great race as well. 
Yeah, and that, that's such a great story too because she's been dealing with injury during cross seasons for most of her collegiate career. And it just shows you when you put hard work in and you stay injury free, that you can actually that she had the she had the talent and the ability to succeed at a high level, and now we have her winning three races in a row now, and she should be able to compete in my opinion for a top five place at the national meet. You know, I, I believe that she's going to run very well there. Uh, in addition to obviously being a student athlete and competing in cross country, I know you're involved in the the student athlete advisory committee. Uh, just talk about your role uh, with the SAC organization and and, and what that group does. Well, I am the president of the Student Athletic Advisory Committee here on, at Ferris State, and then I am also the chairperson of the GLIAC Student Athletic Advisory Committee. My goal is that we work with Make-A-Wish, and uh, my goal is to raise as much money as a conference and as an institution uh, to give, it, give into uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Ferris has recently come to an agreement with Northwood that uh, I've tried to work out with their president, Kyle Phillips, he and I are working together to basically, uh, there's a kid in Midland that is suffering from uh, leukemia. He wants to go to the Super Bowl. Our goal is to raise the money that we need to do to get him to the Super Bowl by December 3rd. Right now we're on schedule to do that and then we'll be raising more money after that just for the Make-A-Wish Foundation going towards a general fund. Certainly a great cause that uh, impacts a, a young person that Ferris State Athletics is involved in. Uh, as a student athlete, uh, obviously the academic side important. Uh, what, what are your plans uh, after you graduate from Ferris State University? My goal is to continue my studies. I want to go into uh, athletic administration. Um, I have been talking with Dell, the commissioner of the GLIAC, and Perk, the, our uh, athletic director here, about where to go in the next step, um, basically basically looking into schools. Both of them are Ohio alums and they are pointing me in the direction of Ohio. I've also had inquiries from uh, Michigan State, University of Minnesota, Ohio. Um, I'm keeping my options open right now, but I plan on sticking around for at least the spring semester, just doing some work and then finishing out the track season. And real quickly uh, here, uh, just talk about what it means to be a part of a, a cross country team that's been able to go to nationals here for the second year in a row. Well, for those who follow uh, men's cross country, um, we've really risen from the depths of almost having nothing to coming up and going to the national meet two straight years in a row. Uh, my freshman year, I was redshirted, and my sophomore year, we finished below the below 16th in the region. And it shows the the guys that we have, how close they are, how much dedication we have, and we keep each other accountable to each other to make sure that every summer we're doing all the mileage we need to do all the things to stay injury free, healthy, and to make sure that we're staying eligible. Um, I wouldn't trade this experience for the world. I've had the best experience, uh, I believe, of my lifetime at Ferris, especially dealing with the cross country team here. Um, these guys are my brothers. I will always remember who they are. I plan on keeping in touch with all of them, and um, I'm excited for having one last race with them. Well, best of luck to the Bulldogs this weekend. Thank you. This has been another episode of Ferris Sports Update. You can follow all the action online at ferrisstatebulldogs.com.